Good morning guys. Welcome back to my channel. It is so gross outside. I really did not want to get up. It was really hard, but work time. Also, this is my commuter look. I usually look ridiculous as I walk to work because I always try to walk using um, tennis shoes. It's just better for your posture and also you don't ruin your shoes. So I always change into heels or sandals when I get to the office. But during my whole commute, I look ridiculous, especially with my little backpack. <laughs> so I wasn't able to vlog yesterday because it was pouring. I got to work super late. My umbrella broke. It was just like crazy. But today is gonna be a full day of vlogging. As you guys know, I also try to give you guys a little bit of a science segment. Last time we discussed glycemic index and I received a lot of comments on that one. So this time we will be talking about EPOC, most commonly known as afterburn. I hope you like this. As always, you know, and give me a thumbs up give me a comment let me know what you want to see i've been receiving a couple of questions about my routine about my lifestyle so i might be doing a q a soon so send me questions Hey guys, so I just left the office. I am walking back home with my seltzer water. It's not soda. No, I do not walk home usually. As you've seen from my previous videos, I take the subway. So why am I walking home? I ate a lot today. Three main things that I want to communicate by saying that. Number one is that instead of guilt tripping myself, as I've spoken in other vlogs, it's all about the balance. It's not about the individual things that you do. It's not about that one day that you overate or that one day you didn't work out. The same way that one plate of salad is not going to make you lose weight, one bad day is not going to make you gain weight. Of course, as long as you balance it out. For example, because I know that I've consumed many more calories than I should, I'm walking home. Will that counteract it? No. But it will lessen the damages. When you're vlogging and then your mom gives you a call. Another thing that I wanted to point out about this is how it is so important to find what works for you especially when it comes to trying to lose weight because take my boyfriend for example like that kid is crazy determined he also doesn't have what we women have as like cravings and hormonal imbalances and like emotional instability and just being a woman it's not an excuse that we use people it's real and when he commits and he says i'm gonna go on a 2000 calorie diet the kid goes on a 2000 calorie diet religiously for x amount of days in a row and doesn't break it now i don't know about you but that absolutely doesn't work for me i go psychologically crazy and so because I've been toying around with these things for so many years, I've developed strategies that work for me. It's not about the individual days, but it's about what you do overall. 
and obviously your body's not clockwork so it's not like the week is the total you could look at the week you could look at the month it doesn't matter what matters is that overall you have a deficit how can you use that to your advantage for example i do four days where i'm on a deficit then i do two days where i'm an isocaloric meaning i'm balanced then i do two days where i'm at a surplus what does that mean for me if you look at the numbers i'm probably either at a deficit or at a balance a b i'm not doing a huge deficit because again that doesn't work for me that would end up with me binge eating i would prefer to do a gradual progress where i see changes very slowly but i'm psychologically sane and c it helps me psychologically because i have my days where i can you know refeed now refeed does not mean i call it a cheat day well that is important because i'm not gonna go on a 10,000 calorie challenge and say that's my refeed obviously not i just wanted to put that sprinkle that inside here just because it happened to happen today i also listened to my body so you know i did leg day yesterday and i did 1300 calories which is a insane deficit and today my body was like feed me so i had a lot of rice a lot of sweet potato and a brownie so now i'm walking <laughs> As I said, I'll be covering EPOC, actually debunking it. EPOC, which stands for Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption, or formerly known as the Afterburn. What is this EPOC? EPOC is that extra oxygen that your body consumes after an exercise in order to make up for the energy it spent during the exercise. Think of your body as a car. You used it a lot. It's going to require a little bit extra in order to recover, recharge, just like a reset. You guys are probably familiar with this concept because Epoch has become spread and diffused in the fitness industry in relation to high interval training otherwise known as hit training great examples of hit training are our famous berry's boot camp which is basically when you do shorter periods of intense spurts of exercise the whole idea and what is publicized by these companies is that you can burn more in short periods of time because of the afterburn that these exercises cause. What these companies are saying is that after going and doing very short, intense interval training circuits, you are actually burning much more than if you stay on a stationary bike for an hour because of this afterburn quotient. Now, to all my Barry's boot camp lovers out there. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of issues with the train of thought. <laughs> First of all, let's discuss what is true about this. It is true that afterburn exists. That is true. However, it is not magic. It is not that you packed in an extra 800 calories. In fact, EPOC is between 6 to 15 percent of the calories you spent in that workout. Let me paint you a picture. Say that you spent 300 calories. 
your afterburn was about 30 calories. So congratulations, you can now eat 10 baby carrots. Issue number one is this overestimation of the afterburn. Issue number two is that afterburn or this epoch quotient is actually impacted by the intensity of a workout more so than the longevity of it. So you could technically argue that high interval training creates a higher afterburn than long endurance training. However, when you look at the totals, it's actually the same amount as a total because with the long endurance training, you're actually burning for longer periods of time with less epoch. And with high interval, you're burning for shorter periods of time with a higher epoch. If you do the math, the difference between these two is very, very little. So one is not better than the other. That, my friends, is marketing. Here is the issue. I am not saying that you should not go to Barry's Bootcamp. I'm not saying that you just threw away a bunch of money by becoming a Barry's Bootcamp member or by having spent all of these days doing high interval training. What I am saying is that I have so many people who tell me, Hi! What are you doing here? Guys, I've been getting so many interruptions. I'm so sorry. I just ran into a friend in the middle of the street. Um, that was funny and a little bit embarrassing. What I was saying though, I get so many messages from people saying, you know, what am I doing wrong? I'm logging all my foods on my fitness pal. I'm logging my workouts. I go to berries. I burn 800 calories. My fitness pal is telling me that I can consume an extra 800 calories. Oh, speaking of the devil. Devil. Um, my fitness pal is telling me that I can consume an extra 800 and I'm gaining weight. So what am I doing wrong? Let's start with the first thing. You are not burning 800 calories at Barry's Bootcamp. To paint a picture, if I run 10K, I maybe burn 600, maybe 700. So there's no way you're burning 800 at one hour of Barry's Bootcamp, first of all. Second of all, this afterburn that you're hearing is again as we discussed about a 10 percent which is 80 calories even if you magically had burned that it's still nothing it's less than an apple an apple is 100 calories and so i'm sorry to tell you but you're literally consuming extra calories i know no despairing here's what you need to do first tip Stop overestimating the calories that you burn during exercise. I am someone who is active. I have that reputation amongst my coworkers, amongst my friends. I walk everywhere. I gym every day for an hour. I weight lift and I do endurance trainings on the weekends. And do you want to know how many calories I allocate on my day towards my workout? 300? That's it. There is no trainer who can tell you how many you burned. Tip number two, overestimate the calories that you consume if you're in doubt. It's really easy to estimate a protein bar because it literally tells you in the package, but it's kind of difficult to estimate how much a bowl of a poke bowl is because you don't know how many spoons, you don't know how many grams, you don't know how many pieces of sashimi. So. I always overestimate those. If you do the math by underestimating in your workout and overestimating in your food, you're bound to make some room for a deficit. Finally, stop thinking that high intensity interval training does miracles. I'm not saying that you spent a bunch of money or time on something useless. Obviously, it burns calories. And obviously, 
it's an amazing strategy when you are tight in time. Because if you think about it, you're burning the same amount in 30 minutes that you would have in an hour. So it's totally worth it. However, don't be overestimating what you're burning because that is really gonna bite you in the I hope this was helpful and educational and I'm excited to hear your comments. I have a feeling it might be a little bit controversial. I hope not. Let me know what you think below. Now I'm gonna go do some upper body. <laughs>